Okay, so before we start the next chapter, I just want to quickly show you how chapter 9 is going to be both similar and different to chapter 8. So chapter 8 was obviously all about hypothesis testing, and all of the tests that we learned about all involved comparing a parameter with a specific value. And the two parameters we focused on were mu, which is the population mean or average, and p, which stands for the population proportion. So within all our hypothesis tests, when we did step one and we set up our hypotheses, they always involved one of the following. So we're used to seeing things like mu is maybe equal to five or not equal to five, less than five, greater than five, you know, one of those might have been our claim. Or when we got to the section about proportions, same thing, only we were using the uh, population proportion parameter. But either way, we were comparing the parameter with a specific value. Now in chapter nine, we're still gonna be doing hypothesis testing and we're still gonna do the same methods. But the difference now is that we're gonna be comparing two parameters with each other, as opposed to a single parameter with a specific value. So as we go through chapter nine, we'll see that our hypotheses will always involve one of the following. So when we're talking about averages, uh, we might be claiming that the two means are equal to each other or not equal to each other. Maybe one is less than the other or maybe one is greater than the other. And then we're also gonna do a section about proportions. So we'll be looking at two uh, proportions for two separate groups and we'll do some sort of comparison between the two of them. So now that you've had a super quick preview of chapter nine, let's go ahead and start um, with our first uh, couple chapters here, or a couple sections. So section 9.1 and 9.2 is gonna be about testing the difference between two means of independent samples. Okay, so what does independent mean? Well, if two samples are independent of each other, that means that the subject selected for the first sample in no way influence the, the way the subjects are selected in the second sample. So basically independent just means that you have two random samples and they're being picked from separate populations. So they really don't affect each other at all. And to do this hypothesis test, we're gonna do a specific type of t-test. I'll tell you what that is in just a second. And let's see, since it is a t-test, we're not gonna be able to do the traditional method, so we'll stick with just the p-value method for this section. Okay, so the p-value method, we know the four steps. Those aren't gonna change. Um, for step one, when we state our hypotheses and identify the claim, uh, you'll notice up here that no matter what, your h naught, your null hypothesis, again, we're always gonna use an equal sign, so in these ones, we're always gonna state that mu one equals mu two. So in other words, we're stating that there is no difference between the two. And then the alternative hypothesis is just gonna depend on you know, what the claim is in the question or how the question is phrased. So if it's two-tailed, that means your alternative hypothesis is gonna be mu one is not equal to mu two which just means that the difference between them, so if you take mu one and subtract mu two, it won't be equal to zero since they're different. Um, a left-tailed test, your alternative hypothesis is gonna be that mu one is less than mu two. And then a right-tailed test means that your alternative is gonna be mu one is greater than mu two. Now I have these parts in parentheses here um, just because that's another very common way of writing these. So textbooks usually either write it uh, this first way right here, which is how our book does it, or this other way here where you're clearly like showing the difference between the two. So I just wanna show you that because it is important to understand the meaning behind both, but also if you end up looking this up somewhere um, and you see it written like this, just know that it's the same thing. Um, it's basically just the same equation. You know, you're just moving stuff over to the other side and kind of writing it a little bit different like that. Okay, so step two is to find the p-value. So the place you're gonna go in your calculator, it's a specific t-test, so it's not just a general t-test. It's two sample t-test. So two sample t-test and that's where all of your other tests are in your calculator and of course when we do examples um, we'll talk more about how to actually use that and then steps three and four are going to be the exact same um, steps that we're already used to 
Okay, so let's do our first example. So example one says that the mean age of a random sample of 25 people who are playing the slot machines is 48.7 years and the standard deviation is 6.8 years. The mean age of a random sample of 35 people who are playing roulette is 55.3 with a standard deviation of 3.2 years. Can it be concluded at alpha equals 0.05 that the mean age of those playing the slot machines is less than those playing roulette. Okay, now on connect, it's gonna define like which is your first sample and which is your second sample, so you won't have to worry about that on there. But whenever you're doing problems out by hand, um, it's important to write that stuff down. And generally, we just name the first sample as the one that's mentioned in the question first. So I'm gonna start out by identifying that mu1 is gonna represent the slot machines and then mu2 will represent um, playing roulette. Okay, so step one, we're gonna state our hypotheses. So our null hypothesis is always going to be that mu1 equals mu2. Okay, and then we'll just look at what the actual claim is. So can it be concluded that the mean age of those playing slot machines is less than those playing roulette. Okay, so our alternative hypothesis, we can represent slot machines is less than roulette by writing mu1 is less than mu2. And of course you want to identify that as your claim, so you write that down. Okay, step two, uh, if you wanna grab your calculator, um, let's see, you're gonna go to where you always go, so stat, tests, and then on mine it's the fourth one down. It's called two sample T test. Okay, make sure you don't click two sample Z test. That's different, so two sample T test. And then you'll press enter. And then um, highlight stats and click enter. That way it generates that list for you. And then we're gonna fill everything out there. Okay, so it's pretty self-explanatory, everything they want. You know, they want the, the average of the first sample, the standard deviation of the first sample, how many people are in the first sample, and then all the same things for the second sample. So I'm showing you on here um, what it should look like when you have everything filled out. Okay, so we're under two sample t-test. We have stats highlighted, 48.7, 6.8, and 25. Those were all the stats that went with um, the slot machines. And then 55.3, 3.2, and 35 were all of the statistics that went with um, roulette. Okay, and then for your null hypothesis or alternative hypothesis, make sure you select the less than mu2 sign. Okay, it always matches the one in your alternative hypothesis. And then for pooled, don't touch that. Just always leave that as no. We will never mess with that um, for the entire rest of the semester. Okay, and then you'll go um, down one more and click calculate. And then you should get a screen like I have on here. So we know that we just want our p-value from that screen. So let's see, it looks like if I round to four decimal places, that's gonna be four point one nine seven one. Okay, now normally in class I would ask if anyone disagrees with that. Um, hopefully someone would raise their hand and would say, we definitely can't have a p-value that's larger than one, because that doesn't make sense since it's a probability. So I would say, good job, and I would say, why? And someone would point out that um, there's an e negative five on there. Okay, so that's what that looks like. So don't ignore that. Okay, so we have to move our decimal place five spots to the left. So we end up with 0 0.00041971. And then if we round to four decimal places, it would be zero. So I don't wanna write that. So I'm gonna do it to five decimal places. So it's 0 0.00004. Okay, and then uh, steps three and four are nothing new at all. They're gonna be the exact same that 
um, we already know from our other um, p-value cases. So for step three, we're just going to compare our p-value with alpha. So 0 0.00004 is definitely less than or equal to 0 0.05. So that means that we reject the null hypothesis. And if we're rejecting the null and the claim is in the alternative, then we say there is enough evidence to support the claim.